Hello everyone, I'm Crydax, and welcome to my review of Into the Breach. Into the Breach is a turn-based strategy puzzler roguelike game developed by Subset Games, the makers of FTL, in 2018. I've had this game in my wish list for like six years now, and the reason it took me so long to get it is that I'm not the biggest roguelike person. I liked FTL and could respect it's one of the best, but it didn't hook me for dozens of playthroughs after I beat it once, I was kind of done, and that's how a lot of roguelikes feel for me. They're fun for a bit, and I just can't quite get into them enough to play them for super long. So that being said, Into the Breach is hailed at a 94% review score on Steam, which is incredibly high. So it stayed on my list for a while and I thought it looked pretty cool. So I finally went and grabbed it on sale. And the first thing I noticed upon landing in the game is how reminiscent of FTL the graphics feel. They're incredibly well done, they're, they're crisp and clean, and it makes the game a lot more fun to play, to be honest. The mechs and the enemies all look cool and unique. The various biomes are well done. The GUIs and the menus look good. So it's just a, it's really a spectacle of pixel art. I really like it. You're thrown into the game without a big hand holding tutorial. There's a, a warm up, uh, I think they called it a simulation mission that kind of teaches you the basics and then they set you off to go and they have a few more pop up tutorials throughout the game. And the main idea of this game is to protect the buildings on the map, which represent your power grid shown at the top of the screen. You have so many pips of power and that is kind of like your campaign health. If it goes to zero, you lose instantly. And what's crazy is some buildings can provide up to two power, meaning if an enemy deals two damage or more to that building, they wipe out two of those pips at once. And some enemies can deal that damage to multiple tiles, meaning if you got unlucky a bad attack could deal like four or even more damage to your power grid and that means you really want to have a flexible mech squad to be able to you know move enemies around so that they can't deal that damage the main opponents in the game are these kaiju thing are sorry i mean vex uh and they move and then plan their attacks on their turn they also emerge so you don't know which enemies are going to emerge from the ground and they'll emerge and then they'll move and then they'll plan their attack and most of them can't do anything um other than just move. Some of them have kind of a one-two punch ability, like there's a scorpion that will web something and then plan its attack on the thing it webs. So if your mech is webbed, you won't be able to move your mech until you either push the mech or push the scorpion so the webbing gets canceled, that kind of thing. Um, but the enemies can never attack on the same turn they move. So what that means is you kind of have a puzzle on your turn and that's what's really fun you only control three mechs and they each only get a single move and a single attack usually and so there's this puzzle on your turn that you're trying to find a solution where none of your buildings get damaged none of your mechs get damaged and ideally you're killing or dealing the most damage possible to the vec enemies so that you know if you can't kill them this turn you can maybe kill them the next turn and another interesting part of the puzzle is whenever you push something it damages something that it gets pushed into. So if you push it into a space that's not empty, like one of your mechs, well, your mech will take a damage, but the pushed unit will also take a damage. So by pushing something, you can deal damage to two things at the same time, and sometimes that's great. Other times it's not great, because there's a building behind them, and if you push them into a building, well, you're damaging the building. And so often it's, it's really complex, because some of the things that you really wish you could do would end up damaging a building, or damaging your mech too much or opening up a mech to get hit you know when you're trying to push an enemy so that it doesn't deal damage to a building you might push it into a spot that then deals damage to one of your mechs and so it's it's a very tricky puzzle to solve to try to make sure nothing that you care about gets damaged and if you're you know if you're really able to you can make it so that the enemies attack each other and then you're turning bad damage into good damage and so that that's really the puzzle of each turn and your mechs fully heal after each mission so really their health is a resource obviously you don't want them to take damage but if you have a, a mech with five health and it, it can take two damage to save a building, that's totally worth it. But then if you lose the mech, you lose the mech for the rest of the mission and the pilot's dead. So you want to be really careful to try to use your mech's health, but not use too much of it. Otherwise, you're at risk of losing your pilots, which are pretty important. It's not super easy to plan ahead multiple turns because you don't know which enemies are going to emerge from the ground. 
And you also don't really know what they're going to do on their turn. If there is a more obvious logic to what enemies do on their turn, it was never clear to me. It's not like they just attack the closest thing or anything like that. So often, you know, each turn is kind of its own puzzle and you don't feel super stressed trying to plan ahead three turns like, oh, well, if that guy's here, then he'll attack that thing. Like, you don't really know that he's going to attack that thing. So you don't have to worry about exactly what your enemies are going to do on the next turn. Obviously, the general location of enemies does matter as they only have a few movement tiles and your mechs only have a few movement tiles. So you want to make sure everything kind of ends up in the zone you want it to be in. But other than that, you can't plan multiple turns in a row. And I think that's actually really good for the game. It would be too complicated if you could. And the way that they've built it, it kind of works out to be this nice. Each turn is one puzzle and you feel like you're trying to solve that puzzle and you you only have to care a little bit about the location of everything at the end of that puzzle. You mostly just need to care about have you solved this turn in a good way that does no damage to all the things you care about. And again, I'm sure there's meta strategies as you get deeper on where you position things. And sometimes you can wall off an enemy so it can't get to a certain area. So there's a little bit of strategy to all that, but most of it is just trying to figure out how do things not go wrong this turn? And what's scary is you only have three mechs and there's often more than three enemies and that can be really tricky. So you're trying to figure out how to maybe push two enemies at the same time or kill two enemies at the same time or move one enemy into the attack path of another one. So that takes care of two enemies and it's really tricky to try to figure all that out. So as you continue through the game, you'll beat missions and you'll complete objectives, which reward you with reactor cores for max or additional power grid pips or even reputation, which is a form of currency you can spend at the end of that island. And missions can also randomly have drop pods, which if you protect them or gather them during the mission, those will give you one or more items. And those are, you know, obviously very important because that's worth quite a bit of cash or reputation, essentially. And the reactor cores are kind of like power pips from FTL for each mech. Um, you can power up the base abilities with the with the pips. Some abilities, you know, cost two pips to power up. Some cost three. Certain pilot abilities require a power pip. When you get a secondary weapon or a passive ability, that requires a power pip. On one of my runs, I found a passive weapon that made enemies take damage whenever they miss, like if they just deal damage to the ground or the air. And that ended up being really awesome because that rewards you for doing what you already want to do, which is make your enemies miss. And so I found that to be a really good passive ability. You know, even though it only deals one damage, when you're dealing that three, four times during a turn, well, that's three or four free damage you just got. And it doesn't require you to use any of your actions. So finding ways to make you know, your team work better without having to take extra actions is really handy. On another run, I found a little, it's called a pull tank. And so it was actually an extra unit. You would use an action to kind of spawn the unit. And then you had a fourth unit, which is like a little baby mech that it had really low health, but it could pull enemies towards it with its ability. And that one extra action was incredibly powerful to be able to use. So any of those little boosts just end up being worth so much in the puzzle you're trying to solve. As you progress through the islands, which I'll say is in whichever order you want once you've beaten them all, the first playthrough you have to go in order, and the enemies get progressively tougher as you progress, and, and there are more alpha enemies showing up which have improved health and damage, and they're not quite as easy to take care of, and they will kill your mechs in just like two hits because a lot of them deal three damage. Some of them can deal even more than that, and some of them will deal three damage to multiple tiles, which is pretty stressful because sometimes you could move it sideways and it would still end up hitting the building that you're worried about it hitting. And so those are the ones to really look out for because it's a lot harder to, you know, modify their positioning so they won't deal damage to something important. And eventually you can challenge the final mission the the boss level volcano thing. And one element about that I found really neat is that you can do this mission anytime after two islands. So for my very first run of the game, I had beaten two islands and it was like, oh, now the final mission's unlocked. You can play it whenever you want and it will scale to your progress. And I was like, oh, why not? Let's try to beat the game. And so I just went for it after the first two islands and I actually was able to reign victorious on hard mode on my first attempt, which was pretty fun. And then on my next one, I tackled all four islands in a row 
And then I went to the final mission, and on that run, I lost on the final mission. There were just too many. I made a grave error in thinking I could defeat the boss by sinking him into lava, but lava isn't one that destroys enemies automatically. If they have flying, they won't get destroyed. And so that was my mistake because I ended up, you know, assuming he would be dead and then he didn't die and it did a lot of damage to uh, the rest of my plan. So, it, you know, there are fun things like that that happen. Um, all in all, I found this game way more fun than I expected. I sunk an entire evening and night into the game before I even knew it. It has tons of unlockables, various starting teams, different pilots, each with different abilities, and they synergize better with some mechs or others, and so you're trying to find these combos that you can start with. And just the puzzle element is so fun. It's just one more bite of the apple. You know, it's one more turn, like civilization. You just want to keep going. And, you know, your team is slowly getting stronger over the levels, so there's a bit of that progression. And it's just really fun. There's no, there's no randomness in each turn. You know, you're never going to miss the enemy. It's not like the XCOM 98% and then you miss and you felt like your plan was great, but now it's all screwed up. There's no chance for criticals. You know, what you see is what you get. And so the fact that each turn presents a unique puzzle and once you've solved that turn, now there's another turn with a new puzzle and it's, it's just really fun. I will say the game is, it's hard. It's not super easy. A bit of bad luck, depending on which enemies spawn and what they plan to do, can send you into a spiral pretty quick. But in all the time I played, which was all on the hard difficulty, I found it pretty fair. And there is a harder difficulty if you're really masochistic. And there are two easier difficulties than that if you just want to have a bit more of a relaxed time. So all that to say, I definitely rate this game to be a yes, you should buy it. It, I think it's normal price right now is only 15 bucks, which is super cheap. And for the content you get, I'd say that's already worth it. And it goes on sale for half price pretty regularly now because it's older, an older game. And it's certainly worth 750. You know, that's cheaper than a Chipotle burrito. So if you've been on the fence, I say go for it. The game is even better than it looks and it already looks pretty dang good. Thanks for watching. If you have thoughts on Into the Breach, let me know in the comments. And if you have ideas for other games to review or just want to chat, hit up the Crydania Discord. There's a link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.